Welcome to Rebel Roundup, ladies and gentlemen, and the rest of you, in which we look back at some of the very best commentaries of the week by your favorite Rebels. I'm your host, David Menzies. Brown goes down. Brown goes down. Yes, Patrick Brown was disqualified as a Conservative Party of Canada leadership candidate late Tuesday night. It seems that, yet again, Sneaky Patrick was undone by his scandalous behavior. Kerry Diot will weigh in with his take regarding the sneaky one unceremoniously being sent to the CPC penalty box, perhaps forever. And Dominion Day weekend in Ottawa was supposed to be festive and celebratory. Alas, thanks to the fun police patrolling Parliament Hill, the mood was nothing short of ominous and sad. Indeed, one man even received a fine of more than $1,000 for using chalk to write free Tamara Leach on the pavement. So much for freedom of expression. William Diaz Berthume has all the nitty gritty details and letters. We get your letters. We get your letters every minute of every day. And I'll share some of your responses about my report on a small group of Antifa protesters who actually demonstrated against Patriot James Topp, who visited Ottawa last weekend after his staggering 4,300-kilometer march from British Columbia. But if you can imagine, the demonstrators called him a traitor and a fascist and a Holocaust denier. And when we asked these fine scholars to prove these points, well, they resorted to screaming and yelling and having a temper tantrum. Ah, yes, the tolerant, loving, and smart left strikes again. Those are your rebels. Now let's round them up. Canadians have stepped up to do the right thing to protect the freedoms and the rights of Canadians to get back to the things we love to do. It's, like, it's, just, it's just so tough to watch. There's no reason for that. They were literally running the horses through the crowd. I understand it's like a tactic that they use to try and split up the crowd. Trudeau, you're messing with the wrong people. The 10% is after you if you think it's only 10%. This is something I don't, well, I've certainly never seen before. <laughs> And federal authorities and politicians, we hear you, but we want to be heard as well. This is Kerry Diot reporting for Rebel News in Edmonton. Everybody has now heard the astounding news that Patrick Brown has been disqualified from the conservative federal race. And Rebel News has learned exclusively that that disqualification appears to be around the fact of uh, allegations about taking donations from corporate entities. Specifically, it's alleged that the Brown campaign was using corporate donations to fund travel and paid staff for the campaign. That, as you know, is a big no-no. And that is what has allegedly gotten him the boot. The interesting thing is that Ian Brody is head of the committee that oversees the the campaign organizing for the Conservative Party of Canada. He was a former chief of staff to Stephen Harper and is highly reputed. And indeed, the person who told me, who has knowledge of the, of the investigation, said that Ian Brody would not think of disqualifying anyone unless there was some very, very serious allegations and some wrongdoing. And these are indeed serious allegations. When, uh, as people know from uh, surrounding politics, 
it's a big no-no to take corporate donations. Right now, you can give to a campaign, but it has to be personal donations. You can give to a leadership campaign, and they have to be personal donations. Corporate donations are a big no-no, and that apparently is what has gotten Patrick Brown into trouble. Now, the other campaigns have... Uh, have chimed in and said that um, that they are going to continue on and soldier on, and uh, they they have no inside knowledge of of what's been happening to Patrick Brown, but uh, it has really rocked the world of politics in Canada because it is so unusual that a major player in a campaign gets disqualified. Wow, what a bombshell. But then again, is it really? After all, Patrick Brown and Scandal kind of go together like peanut butter and jam. And oh, what a jam Sneaky Patrick is in right now, eh? And with more on this ongoing saga of drama and intrigue in conservative land is our Edmonton-based reporter, Kerry Diod. Hey, how you doing there, Kerry? I'm doing great. And yeah, this story is really making some headlines. It's uh, It truly is a bombshell. There are a few bombshells in, in the political world, but I'll tell you, it's not very often that a major headlining so-called candidate gets disqualified. It's it's really uh, it's really something. Yeah, and let's talk about that, Kerry. Certainly, the the details are murky. Um, I mean, I'm no Patrick Brown fan, of course, and I'm sure the feeling is mutual. Um, but the thing is, we don't know the nitty gritty reasons of what his improper behavior uh, had to do with, we know they've said there's been wrongdoings, there's been uh, accusations or rumors, it's financial base. But do we en know anything right now what it was that got Patrick Brown disqualified in the first place? Well, I'll tell you, uh, you certainly shone a spotlight on some of the, uh, the antics. Hmm. So that could be in the mix very clearly. Uh, what I'm told from sources who are close to the investigation from the, the leadership committee is that it probably a big chunk of it surrounds allegations that corporate money was being used, donated to the campaign and then used for travel expenses or for and as well for paying staff. So you uh, some of the allegations that you brought forward was that there were that there were staff uh, working on his campaign from the city. So um, it's as you know, many people know when you donate to a campaign, a federal campaign, Elections Canada rules and party rules say it cannot come from corporations, organizations, unions. It's got to be from somebody's individual bank account and uh this is a, a major no-no if uh if indeed corporate money is taken for any campaign it's uh there 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 are laws against that and uh it's a very very serious allegation and, and Kerry, I'll tell you, I mean, I'll wear it as a badge of honor if it was our video that led to Patrick Brown's uh, Conservative Party of Canada leadership demise. Um, certainly, we identified by name six people. Uh, I have uh, photographic evidence of uh, some of those people flying across Canada working on the Patrick Brown campaign when their city of Brampton employees. We documented cars of staffers during work hours, showing up at Patrick's uh, secret campaign headquarters in Vaughn, of all places. I mean, he's Brampton based, you know, so it was kind of like, you know, he was hiding this way. We have another allegation. I've reached out to the property owner that the uh, building that he was running that campaign out of, he, he was getting it rent free. That would be another violation. It just piles up. And, you know, what I'm getting at, Kerry, is that when we go back to January uh, 2018, when he was forced to walk the plank by the Ontario PC party, inevitably, it seems that Patrick Brown, uh, his demise politically is through self-inflicted wounds. 
Uh, he screws over people. He breaks the rules. He gets caught. And then he plays the victim card. What? How do you assess this man's uh, character, um, Kerry? Because, I mean, the idea of him becoming prime minister, that sends shudders down my spine. And in politics, of course, all you've got is your reputation. And it is, uh, he's obviously made headlines for the wrong reasons. Now, he has hired, uh, he said that he's going to fight this tooth and nail and uh, and take it to court and all of this. But if you're familiar with the, uh, the LEOC, the Leadership Organizing Committee, they set out some very stringent rules right at the start of, of any anybody who signs on to be a candidate and one of the rules says that 3.1.10 of the leadership rules states quote all decisions of the LEOC are final and are not subject to internal appeal or judicial review that's pretty uh, final and i know that some people might think well that doesn't sound very fair but if you sign on to something like that and then complain about the rules later I, I really have uh, any doubt. I don't have uh, a, a lot of doubt that uh, that he's not going to um, be successful. I mean, I, I just can't see that there's that there's any success. And I, as I've mentioned in a in a Rebel News report, Ian Brody is the uh, head of that committee, longtime uh, chief of staff with Stephen Harper. He has an impeccable reputation. And I was told by my source, one of my sources, that Ian Brody would not uh, want to disqualify a major campaign of anyone who's in the leadership campaign, unless, of course, there was some very strong, I was said, told, irrefutable evidence that there was wrongdoing. Now, again, it's still, there are still allegations, of course, but they don't make a disqualification without having a mound of evidence of some problems. And, and Kerry, you raise a very important point here about the rules and regulations uh, that Patrick Brown signed on to as a leadership candidate. As you know, uh, he has lawyered up. He's got none other than Marie Hennon, uh, probably one of Canada's top criminal lawyers. Um, so she's a real pit bull. The question is, does he stand a snowball's chance in hell even with a top criminal lawyer like Marie Hennon, in terms of getting the Conservative Party to somehow reverse its decision? I would be more shocked than I was when I found out that he was disqualified. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a big, it's a big thing to be disqualified. They've got their ducks in a row, I believe. And what's more, say he did somehow find a loophole and uh, gets back into the race, do you really think that the court of public opinion is going to be swinging in his favor? It's going to be, I'm, I'm afraid that it's it's toxic right now. Again, you get back to the fact that all you've got in, in, in politics is your reputation. And uh, regardless of whether he hires 10 lawyers and wins on some technicality, I don't think that conservative party members are going to be marking a big X next to his name when they mail in a ballot and we end up uh, seeing a leader announced September the 10th. I just don't see that happening. And Kerry, why is it that Patrick Brown is with the Conservative Party in the first place? I go back to when he was leader of the PC party, actually before he became leader. And what led to his demise was he was throwing so many conservatives under the bus. For example, he reached out to social conservatives, said, I'm going to scrap the McGinty win sex education. Once it became leader, he said, oh, no, no, it's just fine. Then when he became leader as well, his in his first speech, he talked about a made in Ontario carbon tax. Ontario is a manufacturing province. So he threw fiscal conservatives under the bus. And I guess when there were no more conservatives to throw under the bus, the party itself threw this guy under the greyhound. Uh, what I'm getting at is that I don't see any conservative substance to this man whatsoever. So again, I ask the question, why is he running as a conservative when he doesn't look like one to me, Kerry? Well, also, he uh, he 
he went after one of the most conservative candidates, Pierre Polyev, with, with both barrels. Pierre Polyev was getting thousands of people coming to his rallies and still is. Um, why attack the, the, the guy who is uh, one of the most conservative? So, and, and actually Pierre, Pierre and him got into it quite well uh, on social media and so forth. I don't think I don't think that um, that there's a conservative bone in Patrick Brown's body. I just and I don't think that there's he's he was playing the red Tory card all the way super red, and I don't think that uh, I don't think that he's got as much support as he as he has. I, I am very doubtful as to the numbers of memberships he says he's he's sold. Mm. I uh, I just don't see it. And I wouldn't be surprised if he never. Um, he, he's. I think he's done in politics right now. I, it, I just can't see him recovering from this. You know that that's very interesting too, because he has until August nineteenth to declare whether he's going to run for mayor again in the city of Brampton. And on Wednesday, I can tell you, Kerry, there was a press release that went out signed by five city of Brampton councillors, um, basically denouncing Patrick Brown because what. What isn't getting a lot of publicity is that so far, Patrick Brown, along with those counselors that are loyal to him, they have now canceled four council meetings by simply not showing up, preventing a quorum from being achieved. And really, the reason is uh, one of the biggest reasons, according to these counselors that want to, you know, get him on the carpet, is that they want to go through with a motion um, with that would have several forensic accounting investigations in terms of how Patrick Brown has done business with contractors with the city, how he's done hiring at the city. And basically what he's done, Carrie, is prorogue parliament um you know forever because he doesn't want to deal with the thorny stuff on that i think that speaks a lot to his character and his leadership style last word goes to you carrie yeah well something like that it sounds like small town politics i remember when i first started in journalism many years ago we discovered uh these little county councils that would do things like that and we blew the whistle on them you can't operate a big city. You can't operate in politics that way. Uh, when the light shines, uh, when the light shines on you, that's when uh, that's when all this stuff comes to the the front, and it does not sit well with the electorate. So I think Patrick Brown is uh, soon to be yesterday's news. It couldn't come quicker, my friend. Uh, I think this guy is the very definition of a sleazy politician who will say anything to anyone, who will lie through his teeth. I mean, he's the kind of guy he'll spit in your face, Kerry, and he'll tell you it's raining. Uh, The the fact that this guy, if this is his uh, extinction event in politics, couldn't be happier. Uh, Kerry, thank you so much for your insight into this, and you have a good weekend, my friend. Thank you. Same to you. You got it. And that was Kerry Diot in Edmonton. Keep it here, folks. More of Rebel Roundup to come right after this. Well, the remains of 215 children have been found in a mass grave in Canada. Many of you know that just over a year ago, the discovery of the remains of 215 children was found at the Kamloops Indian Residential School at the Kamloops Shiswemek First Nation. But what if I were to show you that what I just said wasn't true? and that in fact, a year later, not a single body has been found. This mass grave is a painful reminder of the genocide. Canada's leaders aren't condemning the burning of churches. No, they're endorsing the burning of churches. A juvenile rib bone that surfaced in the same area. William Dias here with Rebel News. So currently right behind you, it is written on the ground in chalk and corn sash, free to Lich, political prisoner. And according to the police right here, well, that deserves an arrest. Talking about politics and writing about politics on the ground deserves an apprehension. But would you apprehend a six-year-old 
riding on the ground and ju just having some fun on the street? I don't think so. And where, where was the police two years ago when protesters were riding BLM on the ground in front of Parliament as well? I didn't think they were there. So it's absolutely ridiculous. Trudeau's police most probably sent his cops to come and descend on people talking about politics. So stay tuned and try to figure out what happened. Right here. Oh, sir. Hi. Can, can, you, can you explain to me what happened? Uh, I was helping uh, right. <laughs> I was helping uh, write the uh, Free Tamara and Free Pat King political prisoners ac across the Wellington Street, and I was pulled over and given a fine of eleven hundred thirty dollars. What did you use? What did you use to write that on the streets? Chalk. Chalk. So rain. it's erasable. Yes. Rain, goes, rain, rain, rain will wash it right off. How much will your fine be? Eleven hundred and thirty dollars. Uh, that's with the victim surcharge, I believe. And what did the police tell you con concretely about why they apprehended you? Uh, they, they actually talked to me because I, I was in the midst of, of finishing the ass and said they, he got to come to talk to me and they, they, they figured they'd be able to give me a fine instead of criminally charging me with uh, criminal mischief because I explained to them that it was not paint, that it was actually chalk and it was washable. Even if someone disagrees with that message, yeah. it is still an opinion. I, th I thought in a democracy you have the right to express and voice freely your opinions. So what Rebel News is doing this weekend, the weekend of Canada, we will be sending two the Democracy Fund lawyers to assist with with any unlawful finding or arrest that is occurring in front of Parliament or in the big region of Ottawa, just like what happened with the man right here. So if you want to help fund that, please go to the link that will appear on the screen right here and this will help us greatly. If you want to see what happened with this man and how much money he is fined by the police, take a look at the screen right here. So once again, if you want to help us fund the lawyers that will be here to help people like him voice their opinion freely on the Canada weekend, make sure to click the link on the, sh on, on the screen and donate as much as you can. It is greatly appreciated. This was William Diaz for Rebel News. Well, so much for freedom of expression. Then again, folks, Ottawa on Dominion Day weekend was anything but a festive occasion. Police and bylaw officers were everywhere. And no so-called crime was too small to make them turn the other cheek including writing a message on the road with chalk. Absolutely incredible. And joining me now is our Ottawa-based reporter. That would be William Diaz. Hey, how are you doing there, Wild Bill? I'm good, thank you, David. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. So, William, why do I get the feeling that the crime that was committed here was not the fact that this man used chalk to write on the pavement, but rather... It was all about the ideology of the message. In other words, free Tamara Leach gets you a fine of more than $1,000. But if that gentleman had written, say, Black Lives Matter or Trans Rights Now, not only would he not get fined, but maybe law enforcement personnel would actually help him out with the graffiti. What say you, my friend? Well, the reason why you think that, David, is because you've been looking at uh, something other than mainstream media in the past few years. <laughs> you've been actually looking at what's happening. Justin Trudeau likes to make people pay for saying a message that goes against his rhetoric. So that's the reason why you think that. And also, the other reason why you think that is that because in 2020, when they were the BLM riots and protests everywhere across North America, you saw BLM being written on the floor on the streets and the police didn't say anything. The Ottawa police actually kneeled with the protesters in order to protest the so-called uh, systemic racism that is happening in today's Canada. That's the reason why you think that and your assumption is totally correct. David. Oh, and, um, you know, William, let's talk about that. A lot of those BLM slogans, those weren't biodegradable chalk. It was actual paint. And those uh, protesters went around and beheaded or actually tore down statues and law enforcement didn't say boo it hates it's your right to protest but you say to a matey grandmother who's being incarcerated i think as a political prisoner free her well that is a thought crime and you are going to pay a severe penalty uh i think it's outrageous Oh, no, it absolutely is, David. It is totally outrageous. She is a political prisoner. She is currently being held captive because she organized a P 
peaceful protest. And that's the word to remember, a peaceful protest. You could organize a riot, in my opinion. Everything that Everyone that organized a riot during the BLM protest should be held accountable. But she organized a peaceful protest protest a yep. peaceful demonstration that went once again against justin trudeau's narratives which is the reason why he absolutely despises her so that's the reason why she's being held captive and her i was at the courtroom for her hearing the other day and do you remember she received the freedom award i, I believe at the gcaf justice center for constitutional freedom uh, event that that's occurred right. a few weeks ago. She received the Freedom Award, and the prosecutor, the person that's the, that's the lawyer against her in the case, called her award the so-called Freedom Award, which, by the way, uh, Leach's lawyers, a lawyer absolutely objected right at the same second. It, it, it's astonishing. And, um, and again, I, I always throw back to the example. You have somebody standing up for freedom, somebody representing a peaceful protest. Uh, she's held as a political prisoner. Uh, you contrast that to our homegrown Al Qaeda terrorist, Omar Khadr, who in 2016, this government decided to award him uh, $10.5 million, essentially for hurt feelings. The world is upside down, uh, William. But Speaking of upside down, I, I found the mood, and I want to talk to you because you live in Ottawa and you know the city uh, far better than I do, but we were there for the entire Dominion Day weekend, and um, it didn't feel like a celebratory occasion. It didn't feel festive. The reason for that, of course, was that there was just law enforcement everywhere. There were uh, airport-style security set up in order to get on the actual a uh, hill of Parliament Hill. Mm -hmm. um, no bylaw infraction was too small for these guys to clamp down. I think this was um, basically a politically motivated message. This was the Justin Trudeau liberal saying, you see what we're doing for you, people of Ottawa? We are going to make sure that those deplorables that are part of the Freedom Convoy are not going to ruin your lives. They're not going to park their trucks. They're not going to erect tents or bouncy castles, uh, for that matter. What was your take on what we all witnessed that weekend, Bill? You, you, Bill, <laughs> that nickname, man, David, cracks me, cracks me up every time. Um, you forgot one thing, the thing that you enumerated. You forgot the Canadian flag because I know people yes. don't believe me. People don't believe Rebel News. But the day before we, you arrived here in Ottawa, Ontario, I went in front of Parliament. I spoke to a police officer in French and I asked him, is it possible to enter the hill? And he told me, Yes, you can, but we're going to make sure to pat you down before, once again, in French. And then I said, oh, okay. And he said, yeah, we want to make sure you don't have a flag. We translated the full thing. I have it on tape recorded. A parliamentary security mall cop told me <laughs> that you're not allowed to bring a flag on the hill on the day that you're supposed to celebrate the Canadian flag. Justin Trudeau is vilifying those people. He's making them seem like they are the huge, the, the biggest evil people in Canada when I believe that the evil people are actually sitting inside the parliamentary building and they are asking their parliamentary protective security guards to accost reporters that they don't like and to not allow reporters to enter the hill when they feel uncomfortable. Yeah, you know, I think, uh, William, that uh, it was very arbitrary how they were uh, applying the rules. On the first day we got there, uh, Maurizio and I tried to get on Parliament Hill going through the airport security. This is outdoors, by the way. It's, we're not in any kind of building. And um, the officer got her supervisor there. And basically, because we were filming the area, uh, they wanted to go through our cameras and our phones, go to the photo library and... Um, determine which videos they found to be offside, in which case they were going to permanently delete them. Oh, and I thought, you know, I mean, 10 years ago, I went to the uh, demilitarized zone in North Korea, and it, got, <laughs> it was nowhere near as bad as that. And I got into a conversation with the, the female constable, and I said, I heard this incredible rumor, you can't bring Canadian flags on the hill. And she said, no, no, you can bring a Canadian flag. It's just the other flags. And I said, you mean like uh, We the Fringe or yeah. F. Trudeau? And she said, yeah, those would be banned, obviously. And I thought, obviously? Why would you ban them 
And she says, well, why wouldn't you ban them? And I said, well, I don't know, freedom of expression. And and then I said, you know, another flag that's very in vogue these days is the flag of Ukraine. Would that be banned? And William, she actually said, that's a very good question. I'll have to check. So they don't even know uh, what they're doing. But let's talk about some other things, Bill. Uh, we saw... Um, uh, street preachers being shut down. We saw a guy who was just handing out free religious li li literature. He was told to keep moving or face a big fine. And then you were with me when we went to the Liberal Party of Headquarters office and we tried to deliver the petitions, free Tamara Leach and fire Marco Mendicino. And their, um, their police officer security said this would be impossible. William, Delivering a petition that's a time honored tenant of a, uh, of a of a democratic system. But right now, the Justin Trudeau liberals, they don't want to even hear any kind of consternation from the commoners. What did you make about that? Of course, of course, David, they don't want to hear that. It is impossible. Impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> exactly. That's that's the choice of words that they used to that they used to choose. It is impossible to bring sheets of papers to a liberal it wasn't uh, yeah it was to, to the liberal office on wellington street unbelievable yeah. and the security guard had just closed the door so is there another office nope. so there were two arrogant security guards there that oh, were yeah. able to speak it would speak with you the first one who just stopped talking and told you have a good day on the uh, uh, intercom before you could enter and afterwards when i was holding the door up he just stopped and wanted to close the door so i actually at some point let go of the door it's just unbelievable the state of our country that you cannot bring petitions that you have a parliament hill which is literally the people's hill that's what it means exactly parliament hill equals people's hill and the people cannot freely walk on parliament hill if the mall cops that are there don't decide that they can. They're putting the little white tents there and they call that security places. And that's the reason why they allege we cannot film. But as I told one of the uh, mall cops that was there that actually knew my name, which was very surprising, I told him, even though you have the little white tents right here, it is still a people's hill, it's still a parliament hill. I don't care if you have security there, it is our hill. We pay for it, you pay for it, we therefore have the right to go there. But it really just show how far left and authoritarian the liberal government now is yeah well said william and i mean it was such a miserable feeling i mean the weather was beautiful and there were families out there they wanted to have a good time and it was almost like they were being prevented from having a good time uh the fireworks display was moved to another park it wasn't on parliament hill they canceled the traditional flyby of the snowbirds um it, just like I said, so petty, so mean spirited. Last question, yeah. William. Uh, Dominion Day 2022 is history. What do you think the vibe is going to be like uh, on the Hill next uh, July 1st? Because that what we went through, that was just political and law enforcement theater. Uh, there was no real rhyme or reason for these terrible clampdowns on the freedoms of Canadians. Do you think we're going to have a return to normalcy uh, next year, or is it going to be more of the same? Depends what the World Economic Forum wants. <laughs> I'm wondering, <laughs> may, perhaps, perhaps we're going to have a new new wave of virus, a different virus next year, different different wave, something. I actually have no idea. Everything is so unpredictable th these days. Uh, you saw just the other day, just out of nowhere, Boris Johnson said that he was going to step down. Thing, things are actually moving right now in the political world. Uh, everywhere around 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 the planet, I, I I have no clue what it's going to be like next year. I hope Justin Trudeau is going to stop being the authoritarian leader that he is currently next year. Maybe he's going to decide to step down, just like Boris, Boris Johnson did. That's a possibility. We need to we need to we need to have hope in David. You know, I'm so jealous of our Britons uh, for, you know, I mean, uh, the fellow at 10 Downing Street has stepped down too bad. The guy at 24 Sussex Drive is uh, looks like he's clinging to power uh, thanks to Jugmeet Singh, who needs his pension to kick in on 2025, uh, which kind of explains that unholy alliance. Like I said, William, the world is upside down. Listen, you have a great weekend. Uh, stay out of trouble. And uh, thanks so much for joining me, my friend. Thank you, David. Have a great weekend, too. You got it.
And that was William Diaz in Ottawa. Keep it here, folks. More of Rebel Roundup to come right after this. Adam Sos here for Rebel News. You know, our company is growing quickly, and we'd actually like for your company to grow too. That's why this ad space that I'm speaking through right now is actually available for you to purchase. So instead of people listening to me, they could actually be learning about your company, learning about your business. If this interests you, if this is an opportunity you'd like to capitalize on, send us an email at ads at rebelnews.com. David Menzies for Rebel News here in Ottawa. Well, I'm at the beautiful National War Memorial. And you know something, folks? Um, we were here less than 24 hours ago. More than a thousand people had assembled to welcome James Top. He is the reservist who has been walking across Canada going back to February. He's covered more than 4,300 kilometers, if you can imagine. And there was a wonderful reception here to gather him, but not everybody was on side because further down the street here from the National War Memorial, there were the Antifa types. And we right away noticed their signs and they were demonizing Mr. Top as a fascist, as a traitor. Well, that's pretty harsh. So in any event, we crossed the street to go over there to get their side of the story. Didn't go all that well. Check it out. Oh. Hi, ma'am. I'm just reading your sign. James Top no, is a traitor. Oh. oh, I'm interviewing a squeezy toy. Let's see what happened last time, David. You know, I had no idea I was in front of a daycare. So you can. Lying as far as the eyes can see. Oh, can you give us an example of that, sir? Oh, I don't know. Maybe the time to go see your buddy James Cox. Touch, touch, film me without my permission. Film me without your permission. I don't need your permission. Film me without 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 my permission. Film me without my permission. Film me without my permission. Can you take a step back, please? I'm on a public sidewalk, sir. Oh, hello, sir. What is your point? Excuse me? Well, you know what? They're the ones coming to the public. Okay, well, why are you talking to them? Why aren't you talking to them? We have been peaceful. Can you please start talking to those that have been putting their flags in our face? Okay, so that's pretty profound. It, it's, it's, it sounded like flatulence. Really good. I do a very good job. Thank Ma'am, are you not able to articulate your point while you're protesting here today? I'm not. I'm not able to articulate very well. Okay, then. It's a very healthy looking tongue. Thank you. So, can you give us an example of the lie, sir? Fuck that. What? Liars! 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 Oh, that's a good one, sir. You know. <laughs> Why would you think I got this suit from the Sally Ann, sir? Because I saw it. Okay, then. It doesn't even fit. Oh, is that right? Okay, then. Well, I thank you for the advice from the Oshawa or the Ottawa fashion plate. Thank you very much. You know, folks, one of the highlights of Dominion Day weekend in Ottawa was Warrant Officer James Top arriving at the National War Memorial. He had walked more than 4,300 kilometers from British Columbia to get there. And while most people consider Mr. Top a true patriot, well, there was a small lunatic fringe who was labeling him a traitor, a fascist, and even a Holocaust denier. Well, those are startling allegations, but as you just saw, when asked for evidence to back up these disgusting slurs, the Antifa types would not, or could not, articulate themselves. Funny that, isn't it? Staging a protest is all about trying to make a statement and get publicity, right? Weird. In any event, you had plenty to say about these rocket scientists 
inexplicably going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs when coming face to face with a Rebel News microphone. Jacqueline Andrea writes, sticking out tongues, squeaky toys. Now there is a mature group of people. The insanity of these people is mind boggling. Oh, I agree, Jacqueline. And what's even more mind boggling to me is that they know they're being recorded, yet they don't seem to mind coming across as brainless for the whole world to witness. Sad, really. Jack writes, love how the man child keeps saying filming without permission. You're in a public area. There is no expectation of privacy. Well, you said it, Jack. When one is in a public place, there is indeed no expectation of privacy. And you don't have to get someone's permission to film. That's not necessary. And also, when one joins a group staging a protest on a sidewalk, chances are a journalist might just happen to approach you and ask for a comment or two. Such a shame he couldn't figure this out. Then again, maybe he now knows better for next time when he's protesting something in public. Uh, but I wouldn't bet on it. S. Singh writes, You know, we teach children not to act this way when they disagree and try using their words to get their ideas across. I have no problem with people counter-protesting as long as you can articulate your position. I followed James Topps' journey and watched his speech at the memorial via live stream, and nothing he said is controversial at all. His basic message was not to be fearful and stand with your neighbors and be protective of the rights you have because they are easy to lose. We should all be vigilant when it comes to protecting our rights. How that is controversial or fascist is beyond my understanding. Well, you know, well said, S. Singh. For whatever reason, they disagreed with, with Mr. Top, the counter-protesters. Fine, they have every right to disagree with anything. But that doesn't make Top a fascist or a traitor or a Holocaust denier, unless they have proof of that, which they clearly do not. What disgraceful behavior. Fred Flintstone writes, quote, I had no idea I was in front of a daycare, end quote, LOL. You know, on second thought, Mr. Flintstone, I want to retract that statement. I think daycare attendees display far more maturity than that Motley crew did in Ottawa. I wholeheartedly apologize to Canada's daycare community. I'm sorry. And Deborah Cullimore writes, you gave them an opportunity to speak. Unfortunately, they do not understand how to communicate like adults. My three-year-old granddaughter speaks better than these adults. It reminds me of government question period, LOL. Well, Deborah, at Rebel News, we always seek to get the other side of the story. But if the other side declines to give their story and instead resorts to making incoherent noises, then what is one to do? Then again, do you think maybe that the reason they were unable to articulate their position is that they don't even know what they are protesting? Oh, and one more thing. During a moment of silence staged at the War Memorial, these protesters incessantly chanted, bullshit, bullshit. These people are beyond demented. They are despicable. Well, that wraps up another edition of Rebel Roundup. Thanks so much for joining us. See you next week. And hey, folks, never forget, without risk, there can be no glory. Good night. <laughs>